In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Annunciation family. Good morning. Good morning. No other place I'd rather be than here with you, the saints, the angels, and the most blessed Trinity. So today, we you know this gospel, it's in, it's in three of them. It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, and it's also in Luke. And essentially, they are almost all the same. And in this account, friends bring a paralytic on a bed, or maybe today we would say a stretcher. And tradition tells us it was at Peter's home. So they're at the home of Peter. And in Mark's gospel, the crowd is so large that the paralytic's friends have to go on top of Peter's roof, literally begin to tear parts of it off, and then lower their friend right down to the feet of Jesus. And I'm going to come back to this later. But as Christians, do we have this type of faith? What are we willing to do to bring others to Christ? All of us here, and we're going to come back to that. We're going to circle back to that. But all of us here today, to one extent or another, are like this paralytic in that our sins, our vices, they spiritually harm us. They spiritually paralyze us. Nonetheless, today's gospel is clear, though. Even though we're in the throes of being saved, and even though we are trying to become healed of our own sinful nature, nonetheless, we're still required to help others. And I once, I had a, a, a Greek, not in this parish, but there was a, a Greek woman, and she said, Kata, Kata. She's like, I can't bring no one to Jesus. I'm sinful. And I said, well, well who isn't? I said, I said, look, there, I said, she's like, but I, but, but I would be being a hypocrite. And I, and I said, I said, welcome to the club. Right? The church is full of hypocrites. Think about it. How many of us here actually perfectly live out the conclusions of Jesus' teachings? Right? How many of us here perfectly imbibe the commandments? How many of us are able to walk every single day within the Beatitudes in sanctity and holiness? It's very difficult. In fact, it's, it's without God's grace, it's absolutely impossible. So we always have to keep in mind, even though we're sinners in need of being saved, the church is a hospital for people like us. And so there is always room in heaven and on earth for more hypocrites. We can never let that be an excuse. Well, I'm not going to come to church because it's full of hypocrites. Well, then you better quit your job. And you better stop voting, too, because you can't participate in government. It's full of hypocrites, right? I mean, how many things are you going to quit because it's filled with hypocrisy? I mean, you, uh, you might as well unlive yourself, and I'm not advocating for that. But, like, literally, you, like that's, if you're going to stop, every, you'd have to stop everything to, to escape the human element of hypocrisy. There's nothing we could do. As Christians, or even as if we were totally secular humanists, we're never going to escape human hypocrisy. But through the sacraments, through prayer, through God's word, we can try to get better. And we have the examples of all of these saints, and even people we know in our own lives, who have made a great transition from who they were to where they are today. So that we can never use the, um, many, and some of you have studied philosophy, there's actually a, uh, it's called uh, the fallacy of hypocrisy. Uh, so sometimes a drug addict could say to you, I hate being addicted to crack. It's terrible. It's horrible. I am addicted to crack, but you should not do crack, right? Is he telling the truth? Is he being hypocritical? Yeah, he is being hypocritical because he's saying he's actually using a drug but he's telling you, you should not use the drug. Look at me, I'm a perfect example of why you shouldn't do it. So again, to, to say that, you know, I'm not gonna come into the church because of hypocrisy, or I'm not going to evangelize others because I'm a hypocrite, that's a fallacy. It really is. Like, you are able to have a certain, we as humans are able to have a certain amount of 
failure in us, recognize it, know we're struggling with it, and still say, don't do this, right? So we never, we never, we should never uh, cave in to, to, that, to that logical fallacy. So what length are we willing to go to to help others save their souls? Because by virtue of our baptisms, evangelism is a common vocation for all Christians. And for those, and, and really it should almost be a way of, of, of life for us. We should be, be proclaiming the gospel every chance we get by, by, by through our thoughts, through our words, and, 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 and through our deeds. Our lives should be an example to others. If people will listen to us, by all means, we have to tell them the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. But even if they won't listen, our lives themselves can be an example to others. If, 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 if people who are suffering in secular society don't see a certain goodness in us and they know we're Christians, if they don't see joy, if they don't see happiness, if they don't see compassion, if they don't see a certain amount of virtue and, um, and a willingness to not engage with sort of the darker elements of our culture, how will they ever want, how will they ever want to even begin to know Jesus? If they don't see some light in us when they know we're Christians, if we're not any different than our atheistic neighbor, how is our neighbor ever going to be inspired to come to faith? That's, I mean, that's a reality we all should live with. So I think for those of us who love being Christians, um, if we love what we do, we're never going to work a day in our life. Wanting to bring other people to the, to the, to the most central aspect of our, of, our, of our existence, the pinnacle of it, our, our, our relationship with God, we're going to want to share that with others, and it's not going to be hard. And we're even going to have the courage to do it. And if we don't have the courage to do it, and if we don't have the ability to, to say to people who are suffering, once, once, once there's a good opportunity to, to pray with them, and to ask them to come to church and to maybe buy them a Bible and, and you know write a nice letter saying you really need to read this section of the Bible. It can it will help change you, will make you a better person. You need to meditate because I see you suffering and I love you. Approach people that way. I don't, you know, as Orthodox Christians, we don't necessarily have to be on the street corners holding signs, calling people to repentance. But we certainly must engage the culture around us to try to make it more godly, to bring more joy into people's lives. And that is that we can all do. And I'm not telling you how to do it. There's no textbook way. Here's something this parish does really good, really well. When people come through our doors, we evangelize them. You know, I've been at churches. Why are you here? You're not Greek. You're not Russian. You know, what? What? They have churches for your people. Don't come here. That literally happens in Orthodox churches in America. And it's, it's really, I mean, it doesn't happen here, but it, it happens in our metropolis. I've been in a parish like that before. Where if you're not Greek, you're a second class citizen. Go home. <laughs> And I was, a, I was literally called a Zinni priest, a foreigner. I'm a foreigner priest in my own country, right? We don't do that here, thanks be to God, you know? Um, and, and there's an actual Greek, you know, we really practice philoxonia. Who knows? I know some of you know, how, what, how does that word? It's a, it's a compound word. Philo meaning love and Zinni foreigner. So love of a foreigner, love of a stranger. How do we translate translate that usually into English? Huh? Yeah, say it. There's several ways. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I know it means being a friend to or a good host when the person. A good hospitality. Yeah. Right. A, a good host. Being a good host. Being hospitable. Being a uh, loving those in need. Loving those who come through our doors. Right. We have philoxomia. It's even on the icon out there by uh, Andre Rublev's Trinity, right, right behind the candle stand of Pangadi in our church. It said, I think it's 
Eton Philotonia Abram, the hospitality of Abraham. Right? So we see it like it's right in, it's right on our iconography, right? So when people come through our doors, we evangelize them through love, through acceptance, through welcoming them, making them feel at home. That's so important in the church. And you guys do a great job of it here. You really do. We do. We're a team. And we, and we do an awesome job. When people come through our doors, we don't say, why are you here? Most are like, we're happy you're here. What brings you to our parish today? Tell us about yourself. Please come to our Agape Meal Social. Break bread with us. We want to get to know you. And that's why this church is as good as it is. And that's why this church is growing. And that's precisely why other churches are not growing. When we don't do those things, when we don't evangelize through kindness and compassion and, 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 and genuine Christian charity when people come through our doors. So I wanted to circle back to the one point where the friends of the paralytic today, they literally were willing to climb on top of a house, carry their friend up ladders, onto another building potentially, have to get on the roof of St. Peter's home. They start ripping off the rooftop to lower their friend down, not only to be healed, but to have his sins forgiven. So what are we willing to do? That's a really good example of what we should be doing to friends, for friends, for family, for those we love. Are we willing to break down barriers? Are we willing to kick down walls? Are we willing to be proverbially like a Christian SWAT team where we're going to bust down the door and we're going to run in and we're going to help people in need come to the Lord Jesus Christ? Because that's the mean, like, there's no escaping this reality. And in general, we have failed as Orthodox Christians in this nation. Because we've been too, um, and, and I'm not, I'm not even cat, like I'm not. There's no point in, in crying over the spilled milk that's been done. But we were too uh, inward thinking. But the gospel is clear that Jesus comes to save all people, everyone, and the church is to spread through the entire creation. And to bring this good news of God's love and salvation to others. And to make people's lives better. And to give them meaning and purpose. And to know forgiveness. And to not be weighed down by sin. Uh, and the only way we're going to be able to do that authentically. Is if we've had an interchange in us. I often talk about recovery. Right? That's why a lot of times after someone's been in recovery. Five years. You have to go help other people. You, there's no choice in the matter. Well, if we're not being changed, if we're not being transfigured, if we're not being renewed in our faith through the God's word, through God's sacraments, through our relationships with others and in our marriages, well then, if we're not deeply convicted of what Jesus Christ has done for us in our lives, then no, we're probably not going to be able to go and give it to another human being. But if we're not there... And we need to get there. Because look at the example of the, of, of the apostles and disciples. They literally dropped everything. Everything when they encountered Jesus. And they went into the Roman pagan world to change it. And guess what? They did. They did change it. So it's amazing what 12 men and, and about 70 other disciples can do to revolutionize the world. Well, brothers and sisters, we're Orthodox Christians, and it's time for us to revolutionize America through our thoughts, through our words, through our deeds, and to break down the barriers and the walls of people who are too afraid or, or their hearts are too hard. Our job is to, is, is to penetrate that and to bring them to Christ and to bring them to God so that they can know love and peace and joy and not to be weighed down and then have true freedom, real freedom. Not freedom to do whatever we want. It's not freedom. The freedom to know I'm free internally from all vice, from all sin, 
from all the things that plague me and beat me down, and that I can stand with faith and love and honor through the power and almighty forgiveness of our Lord and God. 